So I'm sure you understand judgment now. That the judgment of God is not that we're going to sit on a throne and people will line up and be coming. The judgment of God has been prejudged and the judgment of God is within the choices we make. He that believeth not is judged already. He that believes is not condemned, is not judged because he believed. It's not going to be that we're going to queue up in heaven and they will play television and everything. No, 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 no such thing. That is childhood fantasy. John 5, 22. Pay attention. For the Father judges no man. Repeat. For the Father judges no man. Repeat. For the Father judges no man. Louder. For the Father judges no man. For the Father judges how many men? No man. Read on. But hath committed all judgment unto the Son. He hath committed how many judgment? Unto who? So he that believeth in the Son is condemned. So believing in Jesus is judgment. Not believing in Jesus is judgment. So the judgment is not in the future. The judgment is now. He prejudges hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So if a man will judge, he will only judge with his character. See that? If a man will judge, he will only judge with his character. For example, God's character for judgment will be life, light, love. If you reject his life, you take death. If you reject his light, you take darkness. If you reject his love, you take hatred or, de or, or destruction. Now, please listen carefully. It is still God's love to let you have your way. <laughs> it is still God's love. It is tyranny for God to say, no, 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 you don't want me, but you must take me by force. That's tyranny, and God is not a tyrant. He's a father. He's not going to stop you. He's going to let you have your way. That's why he gave you the will. He can't give you a will and override your will. No. Yes, that's why he gave you a will. Now, so love exposes hatred. The life of God exposes death. The light of God exposes darkness. God is not bipolar. He's not a lion and a lamb. The lion and the lamb. He's not a lion and a lamb. Lion is for destruction. Lions are ferocious. They destroy. Jesus can be a lion and a lamb. That's dual personality. He's only a lamb. He's a lamb taken to the slaughter and yet did not defend himself. He can be a lion. I have told you that Jewish man in Revelation who said Jesus is a lion was just a Jewish man that was speaking from his personal bias. And you will never see anywhere else Jesus is described as a lion outside that revelation. Because he's not a lion. He's a lamb. Lions are known for destruction. That's where the devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. God has only one character. He's a lamb. The lamb of God slain from when? The foundation of the world. He's a lamb. He's not a lion. So the weakest thing a man can do is to use the power of God. You know, that's the weakest thing you can do. Somebody took advantage of you and you have all the power to crush him. And you tell him, I forgive you. That's weakness. But that's the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So John 5, where we just read, I'd like us to do the pretext of that scripture. John 5 from 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. 20. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. 
and he will show him greater works than these that he may marvel. 21. For as the father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. Hmm. For the father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the son. So the background here is raising the dead. Give me that 23 again. That all men should honor the son even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son honoreth not the father which hath sent him. Now observe the word all judgment, the word crisis. The father has committed all judgment to the son. All judgment is the word crisis, the noun for judging. That means all judgment has been given to the son to be put in place for the son. And it will be a function of what the son has done. Give me verse 24. Please pay attention. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. He is calling it resurrection from the dead. He will quicken what the son will do. He that believes in him will not be distinguished from that resurrection. Look at it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath, 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 H-A-T-H, -H, hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Give me the pretext in verse 23. Pay attention to 23. That all men should honor the son. Give me 22. For the father judgeth no man, but had committed all judgment unto the son. 21. For as the father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so, Kabayada, the son quickened whom he will. The father raised the son. But believers are raised in the son. Please stay with me. That's the pro-action of God. Now, verse 25. That John 5 is heavy. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of God and they that hear shall live. They that hear. Two things. In verse 24, you heard. And you will not come into condemnation. So, two things. Verse 24 is salvation. Verse 25 is resurrection of dead bodies. Number one, salvation. Number two, resurrection. Verse 26. For as the father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the son to have life in himself. Oh, what does the father have? Somebody shout life only. Life. For as the father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the son to have life in himself. The father has only life. There's no death in the father. Eternal life. Let me ask you. Eternal life, incarnation or resurrection? Resurrection. Now verse 27. Read 27 for me. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. To execute crisis. Judgment. 28 and 29. Marvel not at this for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. 29. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Pay attention. They will be raised unto damnation. Resurrection does not mean life. Resurrection does not mean life. Hey. A man can be raised and he is still dead. <laughs> That's why Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Two different things. So that's why some people will be raised to damnation. 
that they are raised doesn't mean they have life. Their resurrection will be to damnation. And there are those that will be raised to life everlasting. So resurrection does not mean life. Please, that's important. Take note of that. Brought out for damnation. Brought out for condemnation. A decision they made that now permanently distinguishes them. Damnation. A decision they made. That means in this instance, death and life will be distinguished. Notice that the resurrection to life and damnation happens at the same time. Did you observe? Did you observe that both happened at the same time? Resurrection to life, resurrection to damnation at the same time. It's not like uh, after, after believers are raptured, then Antichrist will come out and take over the world and control. No! Resurrection to life and damnation happens at the same time. Meaning, after the rapture, there's no continuation. This world ends. There's no war ruler coming to take anywhere. Don't let all those uh, uh, movie industries mess up your theology. It's one event. One event. Resurrection to life. Resur okay, by my he that believeth is not condemned. One time. The same time. He that believeth not is con same time. Same thing in resurrection to life. Resurrection to damnation. It's not, it's not one event. Then after many years, another event. No, no, no. It's going to happen at the same time. So the rapture is the end of the world. The rapture is the end of the world. So we find out that judgment is in the resurrection to life and judgment is in the resurrection to condemnation. That's why Mark 16, 15 puts it like this. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Next verse. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yes. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Did you see the way it is combined together? Once you believe and you are baptized, you are saved. Once you don't believe, you are damned. Every time you see them, they are together. They are not, they are not two different events separated by time. They are not. And the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm hollering like this is because this thing I'm dealing with has messed up so many th things in the theological world because of, 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 of money makers who want to just make money creating a storyline that produces fear all over the place. What will you do if you miss the rapture? Have you had a message like that before? Five things to do if you miss the rapture. Fourteen things to do if you miss the rapture. If you miss the rapture, you have missed and the only reason why you missed the rapture was because you didn't believe in Jesus. Faith in Christ is rapture. Amen. Glory to God. Faith that whosoever shall not perish but have. Exactly. That's rapture. Rapture is faith in Christ. Rapture is not a truth. So, he that believe not is condemned. That is the action of distinguishing. So notice, John 5. The condemnation or the judgment is in the future. John 8 verse 10. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? Next verse. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Had no man distinguished condemned. So the distinguishing will be unbelief. That's the judgment. Unbelief is death. And that's exactly what happened to, uh, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 16. 
And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Next verse. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. He didn't say, I will kill you. The day you eat it, the day you eat it, the day you eat it, you have eaten death. So the death is in the eating of it. The eating of it is in your choice. So you judge yourself by yourself. What we call the judgment of God is actually self-destruct. You self-destruct. You destroy yourself by your choice. That's why judgment here or the wrath of God is man-made. John 8, 10 to 11 again deals with katakrino to distinguish Romans chapter 8 verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for who us? Who is he that condemneth? Condemnation ended with the sacrificial work of Christ for those who believe. So nobody can condemn you. You believe in Christ, you are free from condemnation. Romans 14, 23, 1 Corinthians eleven thirty-two. 32, for further study, Hebrews eleven seven, 7, and 2 Peter 2, 6. So, what will be judged? He that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned. So what is judged? Unbelief. The judgment is a judgment of unbelief. So we will see belief not in its full manifestation. About five or seven minutes ago, I said two different things and I asked you to write them down. We will deal with it in a, meet, in a bit. Did I say that? What were those words? Huh? Condemned. Condemned already. Shall be damned. All right, now. So observe carefully. So what we will see will be Believe not in its full expression. So that condemnation therefore is an exposure of unbelief. And when unbelief is exposed, what do we see? Death. When unbelief is exposed, we see death. It's not that like God comes to kill. No. God doesn't come to kill. He only exposes the debt that is hidden in a pre-action that you may take. And he's forewarning you of that because he loves you. Because when you are taking it, he will not interfere. So in love ahead of time, in the pre-action of God... He pre-warns you of a choice and its consequences. That's why God doesn't kill. That thing that will kill, he will show you what it is. And he will tell you, don't go there. But you have the freedom to go if that's the way you want to go. That's a loving father, isn't it? So stop reading the judgment of God like men. You know? Stop reading it like man's judgment. It's not. You need to understand it. Because the judgment is already in unbelief. So let's look at the judgment. So we know that the death is in the sin. That there is the exposure of the death in the sin. So how do we know what the death is? That is what the resurrection will bring to the fore. So the judgment of God is to expose. That's why in John chapter 16, he says the prince of this world is judged. 
What it means is that the prince of this world is exposed. How is he judged? Exposure. John 16, 8 to 11. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my father and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. The prince of this world. So Jesus exposes the prince of this world. Nobody knew there was anything called the prince of this world till Jesus showed up. So the, the arrival of Christ exposed the devil, the prince of this world. So sin and death are self-destructive systems. They are self-destructive. So once you embrace sin, you are on your way to destroy yourself. And that is what we call the wrath of God. Once you embrace sin, you have made the decision to self-destruct. But God's judgment is to expose them. The judgment of God exposes sin and death. Neither of them are God's work. Both sin and death are the work of man. However, the judgment of God, which is the love of God, exposes them. Because they are the absence of God. Sin is the absence of God. Death is the absence of God. So in the love of God, he exposes them for what they are. And you know, death has a timeline. Death has an age. Hmm. Death will not live forever. Keep that somewhere. Death will not live forever. John 12, 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. 33. This he said, signifying what death he should die. So in his death, he exposed the prince of this world. In Jesus' is dead. You know, until then, God was supposed to be the architect of all things. Until sin entered. I hope you know that. Until sin entered, God was supposed to be the architect of all things. But the moment the will of man came into play, God's architecture, God's architecture stopped. Because now, God can only continue his architecture depending on your choice. His architecture now works within your choice to believe him. If you don't believe him, he can't function in your space. No, he can't. He can't. He can only function in the space of those who believe him. He doesn't impose himself. Did we see that God says his spirit will not strive? He will not plead. He will not continue to plead. He will not coerce you. He won't. So in the death of Jesus, Satan was exposed. That exposing of Satan is God's judgment. Yeah? Yeah? Somebody say, oh, if God is really a good God, why does he allow evil happen to good people? What makes them good people? Because they smile for you and give you some handouts or hand downs. Is that what makes them good people? Is that what makes them good people? Question two, is it God that allowed or their choices allowed is their choices don't blame it on God because God's part there is to have instructed you ahead of time Adam that fruit has death the day you eat you shall die judgment contained in the fruit it's not a probability Mm -mm. He is in love, tough love, 
revealing to you the outcome of any choice in that direction. So now, intentionally, knowingly, deliberately, you now make the choice. Why blame God for the outcome of your choice? Somebody said, no, 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 Dr. Damina, you don't know. That man was a real man of God, but he died at the age of 35. Oh, why? Why, God, why? He was the only man that preached in my village, and he was such a genuine man of God. He preached it all his life. Oh, why, why? Who will save my village? Hey, hey, hold, hold, hold. Stop ranting too much. You never lived with that man to know what were his choices to keep his body healthy for a long time. You were in there when he was consuming excess sugar. You were in there when he was consuming excess, excess carbohydrates. You were not there. Oh, you were not there when he was making wrong choices and abusing this body. You were not there. That he is a man of God has not still excused him from wearing mortality. So don't blame God for his dying at 35. It is the outcome of his choice. Why, why, why did they have accident and that? Were you the driver on the steering? Couldn't God protect them? He must have spoken to them ahead of time. But they didn't pay attention. He must have. He's a lover. He must have, have, have. And see, God will, God will not say, boom, pa, am I not talking? mm, -mm. Gently. Gently. But you will know that you were told. You will know it. Even if you didn't pay attention, you will know that this thing, I felt it. That's the common language. Is that the common language? I felt that I shouldn't. That's the love of God. But it is still the love of God to have allowed you after feeling it. To not pay attention. You see, you, you see what I'm explaining here? It's still the love of God. Because that is why he didn't hold Adam's hand. And say, Adam, 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 didn't I tell you not to eat? Mm -mm. I already told you. I already told you. I'm not going to follow, I'm not going to coerce you. My spirit won't strive. God's mercy still comes sometimes even after you have made a choice. God's mercy still comes. Especially when you ask for it. Oh, Father, I know I've messed up, but I just need some help out of this. I receive a miracle now. I know I have fallen to a ditch, but I must get out of this ditch. Father, I receive a miracle. Lakota, Magala, Takaya. Suddenly, you see steps on the wall to get out of the ditch. And as you lift your leg to climb, you have help. Suddenly, you have come out of it. That is God's mercy. Coming in to the midst of your mess to straighten you out. Adam! Where are thou? God's mercy. Now, because we are still putting this together. Look at God in operation. John 8, 44 and 45. You are of your father the devil, and the loss of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Next verse, 45. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me. Why did he call them to be of the devil? Why did he say you are of the devil? Because they didn't believe. I tell you the truth, you didn't believe me so therefore. For unbelief, you are of your father, the devil. Once a man does not believe the gospel, 
He has accepted the fatherhood of Satan. Once a man does not believe the gospel, he has accepted the fatherhood of Satan. You are of your father the devil. Why? And because I tell you the truth, you will believe me not. That is the reason for verse 44. So he spoke and called them of the devil. Remember what he said about the children of disobedience. Don't forget that. Read it for me. Verse 46 and 47 of the same chapter. Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. You hear them not. He didn't say, because you are not of God, you won't hear me. Hmm? I'm just playing around. He didn't say, because you are not of God, you won't hear me. Okay, write it down. Write it down. Rather, he says, you didn't hear me, so you are not of God. You didn't hear me, because of that, you are not of God. He didn't say because you are not of God you won't hear me. What he said is because you didn't hear me you are not of God. Is it clear now? Yeah. It's not like you were made not to be of God. <laughs> it's not like that. That will mean that they were not born sinners. They were not born. Have I established that? Huh? Nobody is born a sinner. No human being is born a sinner. Even if your father was a juju priest and your mother was a child lady of the witchcraft kingdom and carried in the womb of a wizard, the day you are born, you are born without sin. Was Mary a righteous woman, but she carried Christ and did not corrupt Christ. You are not born a sinner. Nobody is born a sinner. Everybody is born innocent until the gospel is presented. And even then, the gospel will be presented at the point where you can make a choice. So that's why Jesus says, Suffer the little children to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of God. So little children belong to the kingdom. Are you hearing me now? Little children belong to the kingdom. Then when they are becoming responsible to make choices, the gospel is presented. If that child rejects the gospel, it is at that point that that child becomes a sinner. So until someone takes a position against the gospel, he can't be called a child of Satan. Because both sin and righteousness are a function of man's will. None is imposed on anyone. So sin and death are destructive systems exposed by God's judgment. So God's judgment is in his life. And God's judgment is in his light. The light exposes and the life exposes. And what, what we call the judgment of God is actually a demonstration of the love of God. It is actually a demonstration of the love of God. Can I hear a powerful amen? You know, one time, Jael, when she was very young, when she started crawling and moving around the house, and she used to like touching things like every other child, so one day, I saw her going towards the electric socket. I held her hand. I said, baby, if you put your finger here, it will shock you. Then I did shock, shock, fire, shock you. I'm trying to communicate that that socket is not a place to put your finger. After warning her, she left. 
after a while, when she thought I was not in the room, she now went to the socket. I saw her and I said nothing. I said nothing. She didn't know I was watching her. She went to the socket, looked around, took her tiny finger and put it inside. And the thing shocked her. She removed her finger and looked around and saw me looking at her and said nothing. That's the way God operates. <laughs> That's the way God operates. He won't say anything because he has already talked. He has, he has explained. You still insist that his mouth is smelling. Go and experience it. Romans chapter 6 verse 1 I close this out. Somebody shout glory. glory. Say God is life. God is light. God is love. Say that God is life. God is light. God is love. Say the love, the life, the light of God exposes death, sin, and Satan. I didn't hear your amen. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Next verse. I want everybody to shout that first sentence. One, two, go. Say it again. What is God forbid? Impossible. It's impossible for a believer to continue in sin. Just like a man cannot be pregnant, a believer in Christ cannot continue in sin. That's why Paul said, impossible. God forbid, that's the meaning. Then, he says, he says, how shall we, how shall we, that are dead to sin? It is a lack of understanding that English sentence that has made some people to say sin is dead. In his English problem, they are the grammar issue. We, sin is in the world. But the believer is dead to sin. That's why it's impossible. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer daring? They said the man died. Then they now said he went to Uni Uyo to give a public lecture in the evening. Does it operate like that? A dead man is dead. Say with me, I'm dead to sin. Amen. Can I hear you shout it very loud? Amen. Say it like you know that's exactly what it is. Amen. Say I'm in Christ. I'm not in sin. I'm in Christ. I'm not in sin. In Christ, I am dead to sin. Sin has no dominion over me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. In Christ, there is no sin. Therefore, there is no sin in me because I am dead. Can I hear a powerful amen? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Then look at the next verse. Know ye not that so many of us are we here? As we are baptized into Jesus Christos, we are baptized into his death. This is not water baptism. This is salvation. Receiving Christ is a baptism. The day Christ entered you, the word baptized means immersed. You've been immersed into Christ. So you can say like Paul, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ living in you is baptism. Yet you're immersed into Christ. You are baptized into his death. Next verse. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into his death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, that resurrection is our new life. That as he was raised, we also, by that resurrection, we walk in the newness of life. Oh, I, I have news for you, friends. You are not an updated version of Adam. 
Henge Bozaga. You're a brand new man. No record of the past. You have never lived before. You don't have any history. You only have a future. And I have news for you, church. Your future is glorious. If you stand up and shout that amen, it's glorious. Amen. That's all I've got for you in this service. Now help me walk to two, three people and say to them, Hey! You are standing by a dead man. I'm dead to sin. I'm alive to God. There's somebody, the life of God reigns on my inside. Now say, say with me, I reign in life by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Now say very loud, death has no power over me. I died to sin, therefore I die no more. I have passed from death to life. I have the seal of God on my life my resurrection is guaranteed mortality shall put on immortality it's not a prayer point it's an answered prayer in christ jesus shout amen to that lift your right hand father we pray for everybody under the sound of my voice the yoke and power and influence of sin and death is broken over anyone hearing the sound of my voice that was bound before now in the name of jesus and for everyone hearing the sound of my voice i command that you walk in the realities of your new life in the realities of righteousness in the realities of your victory in the realities of your triumph in the realities of your dominion in the realities of all that christ means to you in the name of jesus sick bodies be healed barriers be broken obstacles be terminated in the name of Jesus. And thank you Lord that your people are growing in grace. They are growing in knowledge. And they are growing in the, in the assurance of all the finished work of Christ. And I give you praise for answered prayer. And I thank you for the blessing that we have in this house. And everyone watching online on all the different platforms. All our campuses. We rejoice that we have this life on our inside in jesus precious name and every believer says that amen on a note of finality amen. are you excited about this life of god can we celebrate for 30 seconds let's let's make some let's make some get excited get happy let's celebrate glory 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 Amen. We trust that you have been blessed by this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damino, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.